Close the door. Ivana no guarde nada. Deja todo ahí arriba. Hmm. Yo, we're going to get some more people in here, and then we're going to get this thing started. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like button for me, please. Please. Thank you. Yo, what's going on, Kendrick? How you doing, boss? How you doing, man? Trying to give everybody a little time to get in here. Yeah, make sure y'all hit that like button for me. Oh, what's going on, Jason? How you doing, boss? Down so down south, nine five four. How you doing, uh, Jimmy Joseph? How you doing, boss? What's going on, man? Hey, glad to have you on um, down south, nine five four, Broward County in the building. I'm gonna let a few more people come in. And then we're gonna get this thing started. I'm gonna get um I'm gonna get Kyle on the phone so we can chit chat with him. You know, if any you see this on my hand, that's just a replica. That's from the um 19 1983 season. That's the first Miami Hurricane Championship. This is just a replica. The person who I'm getting in here tonight actually wears one of these. These was actually given to them after the national championship. So it's going to be a great night, man. We got a nice legend coming through, man. <laughs> we got a hater. We got a hater out of Kendrick tonight. It's okay, Kendrick. It's okay, man. You know, rings, rings, you know, that's just a part of Miami history. You know, Florida State fans wouldn't know too much about that. Anyways, guys, like I said, hit that like button when y'all coming in. Hit that like button. Um, get a few more people in here. Then I'm going to get Kyle on the phone so we can chit-chat with him. Yeah, but, um, yeah, Jason, if anybody don't know, Kyle played football with, um, with Bernie Kaiser, Mark Ricks, um, Alonzo Highsmith. All those guys, all those legendary names, you know, he was a part of that Miami Hurricane football team that won the first national championship, the one that started it all, the one that put Miami name in the books. So if you if you know anybody, you know, especially more elderly people, Canes, you know, if you want to share this with them, you know, go ahead and, you know, share it. Let them get in here, you know, because he, I'm going to give him a call in a second so we can get this thing started. 
So if you know anybody who's a um, Miami Hurricane fan that, you know, love watching the 80s and everything like that, this will be a perfect show to share with them. All right, so for anybody who um who come in afterwards, they're just gonna have to you know probably rewatch or something like that. Or, but I'm gonna go ahead and get them up in here. Hey, how's it going, Kyle? Good, man. What's going on? All right. Um, so right now I'm live on YouTube. Everybody's here. They've been waiting. They've been patiently waiting for you. So <laughs> they all got many questions tonight. So we're going to get this show started. All right. All right. So for, first thing first, the number one question that all Canes receive is, what was your record against Florida State? Against Florida State when we were there? Yeah. Oh, that's hard to say. I don't remember. We played, what, four times? I want to say we beat them the year we went to the uh, Orange Bowl uh, for the championship. That's one year. I want to say we won, I want to say it might have been 50-50. 50-50, so around two and two. Yeah, yeah I think so. I mean, we could have won more, but it, 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 I, we won, we won, the year I played, we lost on my what was it, uh, uh, like 27-9 or something like that. Yeah, so that's one, and then we went to Dallas to beat them. It might have been, it could have been uh, three and one, three and two and two. I, don't, I can't remember. Okay, so you, you but you you did leave with a win. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah there was, there was, yeah, we needed to win. Uh, the one in Tallahassee beat them seventeen sixteen to go to the Orange Bowl, play Nebraska. Okay, okay. So another thing too, um, being a part of the first national championship for Miami. How, mm-hmm. how did that feel? How was the celebration? What was going through you guys' mind? Well, it was kind of it was kind of interesting. I mean, you got to look at the whole thing. It doesn't matter the the team that you're on. It, it's uh, you know whether it's our team in '83 or any team, really. It's it's got to be a, a, a collaboration of a lot of different things that fall in place. And there's a lot of people that we just gel. We're a team, basically a family. So that's what made it great. The other thing too was that when. Uh, most of us recruited. They don't. We didn't have the uh, you know the top hundred in the country now. The ESPN all those people have it, but uh, you know we weren't even our class when I was recruited wasn't even on the uh, on the radar. So we liked going into every game as underdogs, so we didn't have to prove anything. That's what we did. And when we got gelled together, it was uh, amazing how everything just fell into place. I mean, a lot of hard work uh, went into what we had. We had a lot of great coaches, a lot of great uh, support. Uh, from other people within the, uh, the, the Miami uh, organization, so it was it was a, a collection of a lot of things. In order to win a championship, you got to have all those things all together. And one of the cool things about it, we were watching the uh, bowl games before ours, and uh, we needed you know uh, two and three to lose, which they did. And that led us uh, into the game, uh, and we walked out there. It was just it was amazing. The electricity of the Orange Bowl was. Uh, you know, second to none. You could feel it. We walked out there. It was, we were quiet and just, you know, left it all on the field. Oh, man. I bet I bet the all celebration and everything was amazing. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was, it was I mean, uh, when we won it, the whole, we, we were you know, on the field for a long time. The lights stayed on. I don't remember how long. Uh, we went into the locker room at one point, then came back out, and the fans were still there. And then it just you know went into the night. So it was it was a lot of things. It's it a great thing for the uh, the area of Miami and you know, Hurricane football to start it out with. But again, it's, it starts with you know, the right people, the right coaches, and again, you gotta have the right uh, nucleus in order to do that. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you guys won that first national championship um, versus Nebraska. Now, uh-huh. during, I, I went back and I looked into it, and I'm like, Nebraska was. Handing teams beatings, not not just L's beatings. They was beating teams down. 
So how how did it feel to know that that team came into the Orange Bowl and you guys knocked them out? Well, according to the paper and every expert that was out there, uh, we we didn't stand a chance. Uh, we were you know, the old uh, saying, uh, Davis and Guy was pretty much it. They their average line been on the offense was like over three hundred pounds, and our defensive line was I want to say like two seventy five, two eighty. Uh, but, you know, we had the heart, we had the soul uh, to do what we needed to do. And, uh, again, we were, you know, every single game we played that year, we were underdogs. So, that, you know, that's what we like to be in. And it just was a you know, co- collective effort of everybody, offense, defense, special teams, uh, you know, the right coaching, uh, getting us in, in the right place and stuff like that. But, yeah, it, I mean, honestly, it was important because, you know, you, got, you have no chance going into this, and, and we end up, you know, beat them by one. So that was, that was really gratifying. Yeah. I think the score was, what, 31 to 30? So 31 30. And, you know, I, I uh, you know, watch it back and forth all the time. I didn't realize how uh, great we were, you know, in like the first three quarters. I mean, you know, we had, you know, we, we actually just you know, give a little insight of the whole thing. We, you know, we watch film, obviously everybody does, but we're watching film and we watched uh, Nebraska and, they only played a handful of teams that you know had a pro style offense like the so They're playing man to man on one side and zone on another. And we're like, we'll just send the tight end down the middle and it's hit, take care of that. And then it's not, I believe, scored two touchdowns right down the middle. You can't do that with the offense we had. You can't have man to man people running around over at least a big hole open. Plus, we're running the ball pretty good. So, uh, you know, they never saw an offense like ours because we used to stretch uh, vertically and horizontal uh, to open up the you know, areas on the field, and, you know, that's what we do. It's an awesome uh, game plan, both offensively and defensively. Okay, so you um you played on a team with names like uh, Mark Ricks, um, Alonzo Hightower, you know, guys guys like that and stuff. Do you do you keep in contact with any of these guys nowadays from the team back oh, yeah. then? Yeah, it's, uh, we, we go down there, uh, you know, just, uh, we get down there for football games, you know, it, it's real nice to see everybody. It's a little different because you're there like four years and you see all those people when you got there and then, you, you know, when you graduate and then you got the new uh, generation coming through. So it's, it's you know, it's, a, it's it's really cool because we all gravitate together. Uh, you look at the names that you, you, know, you just mentioned, I mean, there's a ton of them. I mean, there's at one point that I knew probably about two dozen people in the NFL. Uh, just from those teams and, and uh, guys that really made an impact in the NFL. So, uh, yeah, it was great. I mean, th- there's t- guys that set the foundation even before, you know, uh, Mark and Jim Kelly got there. It was the people who before that put the uh, University of Miami on the, on the radar. And we put it, you know, all over the map but once we were there. And they were just dominant uh, years after that. And then, of course, the sanctions and all those things caught up. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we kind of fell off. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was incredible. I mean, there, there was, you know, the teams that came after us, they were just brutal. I mean, if you saw the 30 for 30, they're uh, talking about practices were harder than the games. And if you watch it, the offense just dominated. I mean, they scored 50 some odd points a game. The defense was in the backfield, you know, quarterback sacks, things like that, interceptions. So, yeah, it was one of the teams that nobody wanted to play. So, uh, you know, that was. Yeah, that's a great, you know, start in 83 and just carried over to 2001. Yeah, so you got to Miami at an, um, 82, right? And when 81. did you? 81? Oh, okay. 81. And when did you leave? 85. 85. Okay, so you was a, you was there for the first national championship, man. I must, I must highlight that. That's the start of it all. Because right now, as you know, Miami has five national championships. I was right. I was born in 1988, so I was only able to celebrate one, you know, because being that 91, I was only three years old. I didn't know what was going on. But in 2001, well, 2001 season, I, I got to celebrate that. But you was a part, you was able to celebrate all five. So how, how does that feel? Um, it's, it's, it, it's, it, it's kind of, uh, a great feeling. I mean, I was, uh, at a uh, barbecue at one point and, uh, uh there was, a, another guy that was on the 89 to 91 teams and I was with, uh, with, uh, Coach Nellenberger's, uh, in a, uh, at, at a law firm. He was looking to get, uh, you know, donations for FAU back then. And, uh, I'm like, yeah, they, 
the attorney was asking me about the ring. I said, yeah, well, there's I'm really proud of it, but there's a guy, uh, Kenny Perez, who was sitting next to me at the uh, third and I was like, yeah, two, he's not going to fight soon. Cinderella, I went to the ball once. So that puts it all <laughs> in perspective. You know, you, you win the first one, just sets the foundation for uh, the rest of them to come. And, and uh, it is, it, it was nice to do that. Uh, the guys, uh, you know, over the time span that we were there, and yeah, we still keep in touch. We go usually to the FSU game when we play uh, down here. So, yeah, we do keep in touch. Uh, go down to practices every once in a while. Matter of fact, when Mark uh, Rick went down there as a head coach, took my son down there and converted him from a Florida State fan to a Miami fan because his fourth grade teacher, pretty good looking cheerleader, uh, kind of swayed him that way. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, we well, yeah, got down there and you know got a football helmet and you know that he converted and got all the jerseys and that stuff now. So it's, it was it was a cool cool thing to see someone I actually played with. He knows the campus, and knows the atmosphere, and what you know Miami football is all about. For him to be down there was incredible. Oh, okay, I see somebody in the chat says um, Miami should have six national championship. They got robbed by Ohio State. Yeah, how how do you feel about that one? Rob, uh, well, uh, it's always been my uh, thought that uh, if you do something, you might as well just be quiet. But the, the uh, referee in that game, I wanted to make sure that I made the right call. So three minutes later, I threw the flag. So, you know, yeah, I actually saw Keith Byers uh, at a, uh, a thing, another thing at the uh, fairgrounds with Brian and Benny Blaze. And I got walking up because I don't want to hear it. <laughs> so, yeah, I got robbed then. He got robbed uh, with uh, Notre Dame uh, when uh, Cleveland Gary uh, you know, was down on the one and uh, the defensive uh, back kicked the ball out of his hand. They said it was a fumble, and then he went down and scored, and we lost. So uh, and it was it was kind of uh, you know disheartening to see stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, if you just move on as a game, it's not right. You just move on and go on to the next one. Yeah, it's like I was telling them earlier, man. Um, right now, I ha I have on the '83 ring, which is a replica, but you actually have the real deal. Mm -hmm. Do you, how how often do you wear that? Uh, I wear it as a conversation piece. To open up, you know. If I guess I, I used to be a sales rep uh, for financial institutions, and then uh, you know, just things that I'm in. Uh, I'll work in the icebreaker, talk about it, and then uh, move into what we're uh, actually there for. But that's something that, that's really, you know, you're, you're proud of it. Uh, you, you know, everything that went into it, you know, the, the uh, two days, the, the 12 minute runs, the lifting, uh, the running, being in the rain. So, you know, and just you know, going through that with, uh, you know, the guys that we went through was just a, a great experience. Okay. All right. So if, do um how how much do you keep up with recruiting and what's going on at the U right now? Uh, I I just you know look at things uh, every once in a while. Just I follow. I get the uh, alerts from other uh, You know it's it's not as it used to be when you know I knew people down there and, and the coaching staff and all that. But you know I, I watch and from afar see who they get uh, and. You know, hopefully they get people that, that you know can mesh into their to their uh, schemes there. I mean, it's you know you hear all the time. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll touch on uh, like you know a couple of years ago, Josh Rosen came out of UCLA. I got a chip on my shoulder. Really, nine teams passed. Like, well, what if they don't need a quarterback? You don't need a chip on your shoulder. Plus, in my opinion, it's not really that good. So, uh, you know, you got to look at the whole thing. I mean, I, I, it's taken time to do that. You look at you know, certain. Uh, offenses and defenses. Do you fit that scheme? Do you like that coaching staff? Do you like where you're going? And that's all plays into it. So, you know, wherever you land is the place you're supposed to be. So, you know, with, with all the, the rhetoric that people talk about, you know, I'm going to show them because they, you know, what if they didn't need that type of player? So, you know, I, I keep up with them. I don't, I, I, I kind of like the transfer code and I don't like it because now, you know, people have been like, let me go here. Nope, let me go there. Uh, it's, yeah, good for because back when I played, you know, when when uh, you know Schellenberger went with Bernie, I was looking to transfer myself. But back then, if you transfer, you had to sit out one year, and then you get. I only had one year after that, so it wasn't wise for me to leave. So uh, you know, I ended up staying there, which was the best thing because you know, there's no other school for me because you know we're uh, you know, underdogs. That's why I like to be. I like the guys that I was with. It was a family thing, and, and uh, you know, I played out real well. 
Yeah, man. Um, yeah, today's today day is it's hard to stick it out at a college, especially with the transfer portal. Like, uh -huh. like you said, well, a lot of people want to play. I mean, that's the big thing. And, and it used to be in order to play league, you had to go to. I mean, they've changed it up. But back when I, you know, when I was, uh, you know, in school, it was Division One, Division Two. So if you transfer Division Two school, you could play immediately. So you know, you couldn't go from say Miami to Florida to play immediately. You have to sit out now. Yeah, there's different things that you can do to, uh, you know, get your, uh, you get to play quicker than, uh, than you would if you were, you know, to get there at all. Um, we got one, one guy say, what is, what was it like playing for the coach back then? I can't pronounce his well, name. I'll tell you this. I'm, I'm, I appreciate that question. I will tell you this. I think it's in the days with a lot of high people. I was in an office with uh, Don Shula. I've been, you know, a different uh, CEO of those, but Coach Schellenberger, uh, to this day, I have never walked into a room with an aura that he has. He's got that it factor. Uh, he, he can, uh, you know, get you to believe that you can do something that you don't think you can do. And he was just an awesome individual. I mean, he was just, you know, I thought it was just me, but uh, the people like you're going to his office and, uh, you know, you walk in there, you feel a presence. And, and that's exactly what he carried. I mean, he was just an incredible uh, person. Still is. I mean, I see him from time to time at these Canes uh, things that we go to in uh, Palm Beach and Brown County. But uh, he's there, uh, you know, sharp as can be. And uh, you really enjoy seeing him. Okay. I got a question because um, I remember going to, I'm thinking it was the Bethune Cookman or the Virginia Tech game maybe like two years ago, and they was honoring, I'm thinking it was the 83 team, I'm not quite sure, but were you, were you a part of that if it was? Yeah, yeah I've got a each and every one of them. The last one that we went to was the 35 year uh, anniversary. It was done right. I mean, it was, uh, you know, let you know, when, it, when you were there and you were recruited with, you know, the nucleus that we had that on the 83 team, uh, they, would, they showed the team and then they showed the guys that either uh, transfer guys that are no longer with us, coaches that are no longer with us. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was a pretty cool thing because they don't forget anybody. And it goes from Coach Schnellenberg all the way down to the, the people that, you know, do the laundry and stuff. It was, a, like I said, it was a whole uh, group of people that pulled together and everybody's job that was, you know, at that time uh, was important. And, you know, we had the trainers that would basically be like a mass unit. You know, you're, your arms are dangling off, but they take them up and get you back out there. So, uh, you know, like I said, everybody played an important role. And, and again, it doesn't matter what the role was, it's all important. Um, one of the guys said um, in the chat that he, you played with his uncle, Albert Bentley. Albert Bentley. <laughs> Albert Bentley is a cool story. I don't know if you guys know this or not. Uh, I know you're probably familiar with he's from Immokalee. Yes. But uh, the, the city of Immokalee uh, got a bunch of donations to send them to the University of Miami for a year. And the coaches uh, were walking in one day, and they were playing a uh, JV team. And uh, Albert ended up, like, returning, like, two or three kicks for touchdowns. And that's how he got noticed. And quite honestly, if you look at the tape of the uh, national championship game, it wasn't for him. Uh, probably wouldn't have won. He was knocking the heck out of guys coming, you know, blitzing. And, it, you know, he's, he's picking it up. Uh, one of the hardest runners I've ever seen. You, you don't want to tackle him straight up because he'd run you right over. I mean, he's, you know, I see him all the time, too. He looks like he can still play. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he was just a great guy. And uh, I was happy to see that they did put him on a scholarship you know, after that uh, the first year. And, uh, yeah, he deserved it. I mean, he was just an incredible uh, person, also a player. Okay, hold on, let me. See. Um, somebody has a question here. I I just missed it. I just saw it. Uh... Well, I'll tell you this, just to, to go back to the, uh, the the year that we did that, we were, uh, you know, practicing at Tam Amy Park, and I don't, I'm sure you know this. Uh, Coach Elmer coached at Alabama with Bear Bryant. Uh, he recruited. Uh, Joe Namath, who, when I was growing up, uh, I just thought was, you know, he's not, he was a little arrogant and all that, but that's the persona that you see on TV. I, I met him, one of the greatest guys I've ever met. 
Uh, we were on the sideline together uh, at the the uh, at the, at the uh, national championship game. And I uh, was working at Wells Fargo up in Tequesta, and uh, they were telling me, oh, there's, there's a quarterback that comes through here all the time. I think his name was John Amy. But one Saturday I'm working, he comes along, and he's like, what are you doing here? This is, I don't know, 20 years later for him to remember who I am. And he was in the lobby for 45 minutes taking pictures and doing autographs with everybody was standing in there. I just thought he was incredible. But the one thing that I thought was more incredible than that, he comes in the following Tuesday and goes, yeah. So that I saw you, I get a phone call from a Cleveland radio station, Bernie Kosar interviewed me. And he said, I told him I saw you. I mean, I was happy that he just remembered me from 83 to tell you know, Bernie that he saw me. That was Actually, he was just an incredible guy, and I don't know if you saw his thing on Thirty for Thirty, but uh, it, it, it was a pretty, uh, pretty fascinating thing to watch. He was a really great guy, and I don't know if you ever had an opportunity to talk to him, but uh, he'll take the time with anybody, and that's, I, I just thought that was uh, phenomenal that he did that. Yes, Bernie. Uh, no, no, Joe Namath. Joe Namath. Uh, yeah, I don't have a contact for him, but I would. I mean, I would love to have a talk with him. I'd love to yeah, he, get him on here. Very personable, just, just grounded, and just and just incredible. I mean, I, like I said, that my opinion of him was growing up was incorrect because you got to meet somebody. And here's one thing he did: where he played uh, at Alabama with one of our coaches, uh, Chris Pagotis, and Chris brings him into our locker room. He says, "You know, if it wasn't for Chris and the rest of the offensive line, I wouldn't be where I am today." Again, he didn't need to say that, but that's you know how he is. And uh, I, I just thought that was, uh, you know, great that he said something like that. All right. So we might we might need to set something up, you know, have a conversation with him, see if he's willing to do it. No, oh, you won't be disappointed. He's, he's a great guy. All right. All right. So let's see. The, the way the program has been going these past couple of seasons hasn't been hasn't been great. There's a lot of need for improvement as – as a former player, where would you start? All over. Uh, you need. <laughs> I mean, this is the team I like to see. You want an offense that's just going to you know roll over people. So you need not only the line and, and you know the, the right uh, uh, offensive scheme, but you also need a defense too that's blitzing from all over the place. And you know people can't uh, you know get it, get away from them. So uh, you got to do on both sides of the ball. You got to have consistency. Uh, we've gone through so many coaches. Uh, you know, over time, I mean, when uh, Butch Davis left, it's kind of like, well, who do we get? And the people that they started getting just, you know, it, 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 they were just trying to you know, keep it going there. They didn't have the, you know, the, the nucleus that, you know, other teams had. So, you know, it's, they're going in the right direction. They got the uh, you know, right uh, coach at this point. They uh, have gone out and gotten uh, different coaches in order to, uh, you know, get them where they need to get. And they just need the players. And, you know, back when I was down there, we didn't have FIU in our pocket. We didn't have FAU at all. We didn't have all these different schools that are out there. UCF is coming along. So we didn't have a lot of competition back then. So you know, now you've got all these schools pulling players from everywhere. And then, of course, you know, everybody from out of the state of Florida coming in and taking people. It's uh, it's more difficult, that, you know, to, to keep the people there because, you know, uh, you know, Ohio State can come in and say, hey, you're playing right away. Hey, take somebody away. So it's a lot more competition. There's a lot more teams out there. And uh, it's a little more difficult. That's why you got to get the right players. I mean, quite honestly, if they were just concentrate on Palm Beach, Bird, and Dade County, they'd have a great team. Yeah, I would say so, too. Because, I mean, even um, recently, you got teams like Clemson, Alabama, Georgia coming in, just taking all the um, top recruits from Florida. But um, one of the yeah, the amazing thing there with that though is yeah, you have you know all those people, all the you know, experts saying this guy's the best. Yeah, well, there's a lot of people that fly underneath the radar that are really good too. I mean, yeah, you know, you know, we already talked about Albert Bradley; he wasn't even on anybody's radar. But look what he did. And there's so many different stories like that. I mean, yeah, it's great to be you know you know top 100 ESPN. But how many other players are out there that can actually play? How many players are undersized in high school and then grow? when they get to college. So, you know, there's there's a lot of things, a lot of variables that you got to have. So, yeah. you know, it's just tougher. And, uh, you know, you got to have the right offense, the right defense, 
and the right players to fill in those uh, the voids that they have. Yeah, like perfect example is um Ed Reed being a two star player, going flying under the radar and becoming a great Miami Hurricane and a great uh -huh. NFL player and all. Well, when he played, I remember reading in the paper that oh we don't have any defensive backs, and it was him. I say uh, Mike Rump. And there's two other guys that I can't uh, recall their names, but they all were, uh, they all in NFL. So you got to let these guys play. Everybody starts somewhere. I mean, you don't become a, you know, a, uh, a national champion or, a, you know, Hall of Famer. You got to start, you know, your first game in order to get there. And you know, a lot of people, you know, have done that. With Jim Kelly, uh, when he was down there, he played uh, against Penn State, I believe was his first start, and he did really well. And what happened with them? Michael Urban, I'll tell you this. A uh, great friend of mine, when he was a freshman, they had him on defense, and our receiving core got depleted. Well, we're throwing to him, at least I am, and he's dropping it. I'm like, well, where did they get this guy from? Well, Michael just worked his tail off and did everything, got in shape, he weight room, everything. And look, and then he just stand the out. He could throw it, he wouldn't be looking, he'd still catch it. I mean, that's how, how hard he worked, and everything that he's got, he's worked for. And, and that's something that you know, a lot of people can't say that, uh, you know, he, he had the talent and he just kept working and working and working to get where he is and look what's all the same. And I, I'm always proud of him. I mean, it's just, we had an issue with, with the Dallas at one point when he was there and we saw each other at the Orange Bowl and, you know, we don't need name cash or anything like that. We both don't know each other. So, you know, it's good to see where he's at and, uh, you know, I enjoy seeing him on TV and where he's come from and, you know, just an incredible person. Yeah, um, somebody in the chat was like, what does, what do you remember about Mark Ricks? About Mark Ricks? It's kind of uh, interesting. He, um, he actually lived in an apartment below me and uh, was unselfish. And, it, you know, Jim Kelly was there. He was unselfish as well, would, would help me. But, you know, since Mark was uh, closer, he'd show me the, uh, the playbook, what we need to do, the reads and stuff like that. Uh, you know, very similar, you know, backgrounds. He went to Boca Raton, I was at Palm Beach Garden, so, you know, we're pretty familiar with uh, the schools they went to, but very intelligent, uh, very good, uh, you know, command of, of uh, the field when he was on there. Uh, just, you know, really nice guy to, to be around. He was, he was such an honor to not only, you know, get to know him, but see him, you know, someone that you, uh, you know, have, you know, been in the trenches with, been, you know, through uh, the two days, as I mentioned, uh, just the great guy. I mean, he's, you know, there's a lot of things that went on with him, but it's the work he's at right now. He's, you know, I'm really proud of him. Okay. So, um, as you know, the biggest rivalry in college football is Miami, Miami versus Florida State. How, how big was it back when you play? Is it the same magnitude or was it even more? It back was bigger then? back then. It was way bigger back then because you had, uh, coach Tellenberg and Bobby Bowden. So you got two, you know, coaches that everybody knows. Uh, you got uh, players on on uh, both teams from the you know, same areas, the same recruiting area that they have. Uh, it was uh, trash talk. It was this, that, and the other thing. But after the game, this it, it, this is why uh, back in the eighties, uh, it was basically brothers playing. You know, we go out there, you know, put everything on the field, and after so we shake hands and hey, let's let's go out. And it wasn't uh, Florida. <laughs> Florida, uh, we just couldn't stand. I mean, it, I mean that was back then. It's, it's you know, things have uh, dissipated from then. But you know, Florida State and, and, and Miami was a, a great rivalry. It was great games, uh, great players, coaches, and things like that. But uh, you know, it was it was on the field and then off the field. You know, like I said, it was like brothers. You know, hugging after the game, shaking hands, and you know, and you go on that. But it was it was intense. It was a really cool thing to go through. All right, so um, the Orange Bowl. How, how do you feel about the Orange Bowl? The Orange Bowl, if you've been there, you know it. The Orange Bowl had tradition. It had history. Uh, you can feel it. I mean, when I first stepped on that field, I grew up watching the Dolphins, and I didn't know about the Hurricanes back then, but the, the Dolphins playing on that field. My first time walking on that field, you could feel a presence of something that was there. And, you know, with all the games that were played, uh, you know, the electricity, the bowl games that were played there, you know, FSU, uh, w w I remember uh, growing up, it was five, strive for five was their uh, their mantra that year uh, when they go five uh, orange bowls in a row. 
but I, I wish they just would have renovated and left it there because in you know, the new place that they're in, it, it's basically you know like going playing in a park. There, there really isn't the tradition. There's no history. There's no uh, you know games that were played there. Uh, the intensity of the rivalries is, is not what it was because honestly, the Orange Bowl. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's uh, humid. That's why we played any home game, like 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We were used to the heat. You get these guys coming down here. They could not breathe in the humidity. So, you know, it was, you know one of the factors that we had going for us is we had that. And, you know, with them tearing it down and, you know, now we're playing it. Uh, was I was pro player. Then it was show Robbie or something like that. That was a hard drop. You know, I just can't keep up with it. It's, it's just not the same. It, it's just it's absolutely not the same. Yeah, because one thing, you know, is South Florida is known for the heat. And to take uh-huh. away that factor and put us into a big stadium, you know, that covers half the stadium, it kind of kills the heat, the hit, the it factor. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know that. I mean, if you even live here in Florida, you know how bad it is some days. But uh, yeah, that was. I mean, it was, it was great. I mean, to, to play in the Orange Bowl, uh, you know, in front of everybody, uh, and it, it just you, you know, unless you've been there and, and on the field and in the environment that we had with the championship teams. Uh, you can't, I mean, if, if you can just pick your going somewhere and, and uh, you're just walking in and it's like electric and maybe, you know, graduation uh, for high school or, you know, maybe your first kid born, you know, the electricity, the excitement that you had, uh, you know, it's, it's not at the, the hard rock. It, it's just, you know, the, the, the level uh, of intensity is not there. That's, you know, one thing I hope they bring back is, is, is get the intensity out there. You know, guys flying around. If you remember uh, uh, Ray Lewis, he's on their side. See, there's another guy. Uh, I don't know if he was ranked, you know, in those rankings that they had, but look at him, undersized, uh, according to, you know, the charge. And I don't really go by those signs. I go by the plays. I mean, Ray Lewis, I remember uh, reading one of his articles. He was, I'll try to get uh, 30 tackles in a game. Like, who's this guy? Well, he was close a couple times, just <laughs> running all over the field. That's how intense he was. And that's, you know, you need the leaders like that. You need not only leaders, but uh, you need, you know, the guys that, uh, you now he's leading in order to do that. I remember when uh, Jerome Brown was down there and that, that defense they had, they were all tied in. I mean, it was, dude, the defensive line, linebacker, the defensive backs, and they all had each other's back. And it was it was fun to be there, and that's that's the intensity. They, you know, like I said, it's uh, you know they, they need the consistency with the coaching staff, uh, and and just be there. I mean, if you look at it, you know, you're not winning in three years, they get rid of you. So you know, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I had that Jim, uh, not Jimmy Johnson, but yeah, another great coach. But uh, Bobby Bowden was at FSU for decades, and you know you don't have that anymore. So turnout was at Penn State forever. You got all the coaches at USC, UCLA there forever. Now it's you know three to five years, and you come on to something else, and you really can't build consistency when you keep changing like that. I mean, you got the coach in the office, and you can bring somebody in there and start running the beer. I mean, it's you know, not consistent, consistent, and you know, if you're going like Alabama, Clemson, and those teams right now, that's you. Yeah, you know, they got those their teams. They know what they want. They just keep filling in the gaps, and you know, they keep the intensity up. That's why they're so good. Yeah, it's like I always say: if you keep replacing coaches, coaches are going to come in, and they're going to want their own set of players. Now you have players that's been recruited by other coaches. And it's just a whole bunch of different mix that don't fit into place. Exactly, exactly. I mean, you got uh, like, like you know, the beer's not even there. It's it's you know, non-passing offense for, for those that are, are, are unaware of that. But uh, yeah, you know, if you're, you you got guys that are run all over the place, but you don't have any any buggy to throw, you know, it's not the right fit. So uh, yeah, you got to keep it going and uh, keep replacing the guys and and. Uh, you know, when you do that, you have consistency, and that's why you know, uh, you know, we're in a transition. I mean, to get beat by your little brother at FIU, I mean, we were at oh, that man. game. That was embarrassing. I but think, honestly, I uh, think I almost cried that game. They had a good team, which is surprising. I mean, yeah, you're supposed to you know beat them, but you know, if you're not on your game and you're not playing well, and they are. Uh, that's what's going to happen. So, you know, yeah, little brother, but you know, little brother, uh, they can play, and that's like I said earlier. They recruit. Uh, Bush Davis is an incredible recruiter. I mean, see what he's done wherever he's gone. 
and uh, he's had good teams uh, all over. And of course, he was in NFL with Jimmy Johnson. So, I mean, that's what he's looking for. He's a great coach, a great motivator, a great recruiter, and that's what happens. And if you saw this last draft, the number of his players, you know, are on, on team. So, uh, it's it, it's just you know that's what you need. You want need the consistency of the coach. And you need to keep them going there. And, you know, you got to have the right one or, you know, you take one and you got to ride with them because, you know, I, you know, if you keep changing, like we talked about, it's not going to be consistent. You're not going to have a winner. You know, you're going to have teams that, you know, have coaches that are there for a long time come in and, you know, beat you because you're in the transition. You know, you know people aren't uh, 100% sure what they're supposed to do. And, you know, it, like I said, it takes – 11 on offense, 11 on defense, you know, to, to have a winning team. And if you don't have that, you don't have the consistency, then, uh, it, you know, you're going to, you know, not go to bowl games and you're going to get beat by Wisconsin a couple years in a row, which, you know, Wisconsin's not, not a bad team. I mean, I, you, know, it's just, you know, on paper, you're supposed to do this, but, you know, you got to throw that out the window because, uh, you know, if, if they're on, yeah, yeah, that's one thing in the 30 for 30. And I can't remember who uh, said this. Uh, in it, but he says, when you got 95 guys knowing that you're going to win, telling the other team you're going to beat them and how you're going to do it, that's the buy-in. You get 95 guys believing that you're going to win. You can't shake that. Now, if you get 50 guys, well, you know, it's not going to be as, as good, but if you got everybody dialed in, that's what's going to happen. You're going to, you know, they were great. You're walking on the field, we're going to win. You know, if you remember when uh, Vinny Testaverde was down there, the, the years after 86, 87, they should have went back to back. They went 11 and 0, two years straight, and then lost in bowl games. They won to Penn State, and the other one to I want to say Tennessee, but they should have won back to back. And you know, that's that's how good they were. Yeah. See, um, what they what a lot of people need to understand too. Back then, there was no bowl system, and there was no BCS system. Those Rose Bowls, stuff like that. Yeah, those things. I mean, back then, I, I mean, I, you know, I played little league football starting out, and we had playoffs. How is it that a little league football can have playoffs, and you have major college football, Division One, no, no playoff? It doesn't make any sense. I mean, when everybody started, every team started getting the conferences. That's when I thought, all right, great, they're going to start doing like they do in high school. You know, this, this, uh, you know, city championship. Then we go to regionals. Then we go to state and all that. And then the winners of those things, and they get into kind of like the uh, the basketball March Madness, where you know they start out with X amount of teams and they just went over down to where I don't. I mean, it, it, now you know the the final four is okay, but how do you know like the, the sixth team isn't better than the first team? You know, we talked earlier earlier about FSU. FSU some years would start out 0-2 and, and then just run it. I mean, they would go, you know, 10-2, uh, and 2, go into a bowl game. And, and after uh, after a certain time, nobody wanted to play FSU in a bowl game because they always win. So it's, it's just something like that. And, you know, you can't, you know, I don't really – uh, you know, look favorably upon you know these so-called experts. So this is the best team. Well, how do you know? You got to play. You know, and that's that's what it is. And I think I think the conferences conference champion should go into say like you know a bracket and do that, and not have had large chances. All the winners of the conferences, you go play, and who is ever standing at the end is the winner. And that's the easiest way to do it. Not you know when, when we were there. Uh, you know, who's to say that the 10th team wasn't better than we were? You know, it was an opinion of writers on which, you know, I'm happy that they did. But, you know, if you beat number one, then, you know, you are number one. But, uh, again, back then it wasn't, you know, we didn't have the playoffs. I mean, Division Two has playoffs all the year. I think that's, you know, a great tradition. And they, you know, keep going. And uh, I understand the, the finances behind it. But, you know, I think uh, – if they had a college Super Bowl, as it could be called, uh, it'd be bigger than the Super Bowl because there's so many more college fans that are pro fans. So you know, I'm anxious to see that. I'm anxious to see all these conferences play out. And then, you know, the, the winners of those uh, conference championships play as the other champions and then, you know, play it on the field. Okay. Speaking of the pros, um, after, after uh, Miami, you did go into the pros, correct? Yeah, I was actually, uh, I tried out for about uh, half the teams back then, and 
I, the last team I tried out for was the, the Dolphins. Dick Shul was trying me out, and they're like, uh, back then they had 12 rounds, and they're like, well, we're going to take you late. Or we're going to sign you as a free agent. So, uh, you know, spent a couple of days watching the draft, you know, just seeing who's getting picked where. And then, you know, you're hoping uh, that, but I did sign in 85 uh, with the Dolphins as a free agent quarterback. And I had two ways to go it was either Denver or Miami. And we chose uh, Miami because their offense was pretty much identical to what we ran at uh, the, with the Hurricanes because Snellenberger was their offensive coordinator uh, at one time and it, it was it was pretty simple it was, i mean it was called different the, te- the uh, terms were different but you know the patterns were all the same and who you, you know, looked off and stuff like that was the same so it was a pretty decent fit for me okay was uh was the dolphins the only team that you played for uh well actually uh, i was there a short time uh you know there's uh you know, things that uh, led to me leaving but uh yeah that was that was the only team that i, I signed with okay so, oh man! Now, with the whole ACC thing going on, with Miami joining the ACC, and you know, as you know, we haven't won an ACC championship as of yet. But most people were saying when we did join the ACC, we should have joined the SEC instead. Well, what's your thoughts on that? It's hard to say that now because I mean, SEC. I mean, you get beat up every weekend, so it's, it's <laughs> kind of hard to say. I mean, ACC is. Yeah, you know, not bad, but uh, I mean, if, you, if like I said, if you want to, uh, you know, be really good, you might you got to play everybody uh, there. SEC would have been a, a good choice. Uh, let's see how many we got. We got uh, Florida. That we could have been in it. You know, there's no other team that's in the uh, SEC with uh, in Florida. But uh, I don't know. It's hard to say because you know, economics the whole thing. I mean, you know, you get into a you know weak conference, and you know, you, you can. You know, if you go 50 50, you're going to be okay. You can win your um, your side of the, the conference and then go in and, and play uh, for the championship. But uh, it's always, you know, you, you got to look at the whole thing. If you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. And, and uh, you know, it's been year in, year out. SEC is uh, pretty tough. ACC is not far behind. I look at the, you know, Clemson uh, coming along and, you know, a couple other teams that are out there. And, you know, we should be up there. But, you know, right now we're, in a uh, transition state, and uh, you know we got to find the quarterback. I mean, it was frustrating. I mean, I'd sit in the end zones, and I, I looked at the defenses, what to run in there. I know the offenses are different, but uh, you know I can see the openings and what they should do. And, and I know you can't hold on to the ball too long, and uh, you got to get rid of it. And uh, you know you got to have the guys in separate patterns again, have them all in the same area, uh, and they got to be quick, quick throws. And uh, you know it's uh, it's. Yeah, the shotgun, they're not up underneath the center much anymore. Uh, you know, my son in high school, I'm trying to show him, you know, what I know. And I, I had to, you know, get re-schooled on being in the shotgun and how to, you know, uh, you know take your time and get the timing down on, on, on patterns, you know, the crossing routes and the uh, underneath routes and the takeoffs and things like that. That's a real championship that wants to get to. You know, like look at Patrick Mahomes. Uh, that's... You know, I've seen quarterbacks my whole life, and to me, he's the best I've ever seen. He's got an arm. He can run. He can improvise. Uh, yeah, the offense, uh, everyone's on, on the same page. Defense, everybody's on the same page. That you know, gets the, uh, you know, the nucleus and you know, uh, the, the winning uh, attitude out there. So... Um, you know, like I said, if you want to, you know, be an SEC, that's one thing. But just for example, can't too much guys get beat up every weekend and not be there. I mean, the formula for a national championship, uh, I was told, if you want to have a few teams on your uh, on your uh, schedule that you're just going to wipe out, then you got a couple that you know could go either way, and then you got ones that are going to be tough. And that's you look at it. Not too many teams play. Uh, I would say more than four uh, really, really good teams. But the SEC, you're playing every weekend, so that's you know uh, something that if you can run the game in the SEC, it's it's, it's something special. Okay, we got um we got a fan here. He's um Jason Arnold. He says um we got robbed in 2000 by the BCS, even when we beat the Noles. What's your thoughts on that? 
So I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked my audience earlier. The Mount Rushmore of Miami. There's four faces on there. Who would you put on your Mount Rushmore? That's hard to say because there's, there's a lot. Uh, but just um, I just offhand, I would say uh, uh, we were talking about Ed Reed, uh, Ray Lewis, Vinny Castaverde. And if you're looking at coaches, uh, either – Jimmy Johnson or, or uh, um, Howard Schellenberger. Another player. I mean, there's so many different players on there, but that you know, those are the guys that come to mind. That hard workers. I mean, everybody's hard workers, but you know, these guys uh, took it to another level. And uh, you know, Ed Reed's incredible. Uh, Ray Lewis is, is as well. And there's so many other players, you know, that uh, have gone through there. Again, it's not where it was. Uh, you know, I, I remember when. Um, uh, Butch Davis was the coach, and then he uh, he left. I believe went to North Carolina. I went down there to practices, and yeah, they're all running around in the same suits, but they all look like band members, uh, you know, in the uniforms that they didn't look like he could play. And that's that's the the talent that they had at that point. And you know, just because you got the U on the side of the helmet doesn't mean you're about to win. You got to have the substance behind it. You got to have the team, uh, the nucleus of the entire. Uh, organization there too, and, and uh, you know they're yeah you know, there's hit and missing right now, but uh, you know once they get eleven on offense, eleven on defense, you know I'll pull them together. Uh, they're going to be there. So uh, like I said, it's those to the four that come to mind, but I know there's a lot more. I mean, you got Michael Urban, uh, and uh, you know Alonzo Highsmith was there, and, and uh, uh, a bunch of others. I mean, there's just so many others that you know, can mention. So uh, yeah, it's hard to say back then. Okay, so um, as you know, recently we switched to the up tempo offense. Um, what's your what's your thoughts on that? Let, let's back up on that. What games are you watching? What up tempo offense? That's what we need. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to me, if you watch it, I get so frustrated. I start screaming at the TV. It's a two. It's a hurry up offense. Get up there and run the play. Don't stand there and look to the sideline and get the play called in and then go ahead and run it and 35 seconds runs off the clock 
you can, that's not a hurry up offense. A hurry up offense is you throw it, you get the guy out of bounds, stop the clock, you get up there, call the next play, go. It's like a two minute offense. You want to run down the field as quickly as possible. Do you remember, uh, I mean, if you've heard, uh, you know, you, you mentioned that you're only three uh, at one point, but uh, Jim Kelly was uh, in, at the Houston Gamblers. They run a, uh, it was a, run and shoot offense it was it was a precursor to what they're doing now the uh the run option offense and they were just good they wouldn't even have love they just had to get up there on the line and just start either you're going to run it or they're going to throw it and they'd score you know 40 50 points a game that's what they need they need to you know they, they need to get the defense tired and they need to keep going you can't like i said stand around yeah we're not in the huddle but we're standing looking at the sideline and then well, you got to get up there and run it. And, and in order to, you know, beat a team, I mean, look at uh, Syracuse, uh, their coach. They want to run like uh, 70, 80 plays a game to wear out the team that they're playing. And, uh, I mean, if you, if you know, uh, if you watch football, you get anywhere from like 60 to 70 plays a game is usually with them. So they're, they're doing really big time up tempo and, and, and uh, getting it up there. So they need to do that. If they're going to have an up tempo offense, they need the guys that are going to do that. You know, you know they, they need the guys fresh, just keep rotating them in and out. And, uh, uh, it's, it's something that, uh, they haven't had. It's just frustrating to look at it. Oh, they're going to hurry up off that. Well, three minutes just ran off the clock. Not hurrying up very much. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a good concept to talk about, but you got to actually do it. And, uh, I mean, I look at this thing sometimes. You got like uh, 59 seconds. That's enough time. You go down the five yard line. You get guys getting out of bounds, stopping the clock, you know, you got timeouts. Uh, you know, you, you can get down there in time. And quite honestly, you just wouldn't need one second. You'll do a little Hail Mary. <laughs> You just need the one second. So, you know, the up tempo. If you, if you think about it, uh, uh, you know, Clemson kind of has it. LSU has it, uh, and it's you wearing your opponents out by doing it. And if you do it right, you are going to wear them out. You're going to score a lot, and uh, people are going to want to go down there and play. And that's a big thing. You're watching it on TV, and they're seeing you know, who's running the ball, who's playing. Uh, you know, if you got a team that you keep rotating you know, the receivers and. Uh, uh, and the running backs, that's where you want to go because you're going to get playing time. You may not be the starter, but you're going to get playing time. So it's, uh, you know, it's a good concept, but you actually got to put it out on the field and do it. Okay. That's, that's perfect, man. We're on the same page on a lot of these things. Um, even on Florida State said they had that up-tempo offense and they didn't do quite well with it. But um, – What's your thoughts on um, De'Ara King, the transferred quarterback that came over from Houston? Have well, you... I was uh, – well, I mean, like, like I said, you watch, you, you watch the stuff on TV and you listen to the, who they uh, talk about. Uh, Derek King was a Heisman Trophy candidate uh, before the season started. I watched him play a little bit. He looked pretty good, and all of a sudden, I mean, he's redshirting or he's holding out or doing whatever he's doing. Uh I think, that, you know, just watching him at Houston, I think if they can bring that tempo there, I mean, Houston, you know, uh, is, is uh, and I kind of remember the Lakers when Magic Johnson played uh, Showtime. I mean, let's just get up there and go, you know. And uh, uh, if, he, if he's in the right offense and he, you know, does the offense up tempo, just see, that's one thing that's frustrating is you've got. Uh, all these wide receivers, and if you remember, uh, when it, it doesn't really matter the coach, but you have all these uh, wide receivers and running backs and, and, and tight ends in a in an offense. And one game, this guy has a breakout game, but then you don't see him the rest of the year. You don't want that. You want uh, if you you know I, I like Drew Brees. I think he's one of the uh, you know best I've ever seen at what he does. Usually, there's not a thousand yard receiver on his team, but you got like nine guys that got like eight to nine hundred yards. That's what you want. You want everybody getting the ball, and you want them to make an impact in every game. And you know, there's a countless number of guys that you know. Uh, if you remember the FSU game, oddly enough, where uh, I think it was Ahmad Richards you know, caught the one in the end zone to win the game. Well, we're Like I said, in order to get recruits, you want the recruits want to see that they actually could play if they go there. And if you don't, you know, getting the ball to everybody, you know, why would you want to go there? You want to go to like a 
Oklahoma, it's got to spread off fast. You want to go to Clemson or Alabama or LSU, that you know, just a wide open spread offense that everybody's getting involved with. And, and uh, you know, that's that's one thing that's going to attract people down there. Uh, not only playing, but also winning. You got to beat the teams that you're supposed to beat. I mean, if you get, you know, a William and Mary on your, your, your uh, schedule, you better beat them by 80. You know, and that's, that's it's just showing what good team. I mean, do you remember? I don't know how many years ago we would play teams that you know weren't even on our radar, and it was close. FAMU one year, I remember FAMU was beating us at halftime. That shouldn't happen. I mean, if we got you know that great of a talent, but you know, I, I can't remember teams that they play, but they don't beat them handily. They're not really that good. You know, you need to get them out there and, and, and uh, score the points. And then the teams that go either way, you know, you got to gear up for the team. And then the ones that, uh, you know, are supposedly better, you know, show up. Yep, that's what I've been saying. And even um a couple of years ago, the, the 2017 season when we won the 10 games, I was telling people, I mean, I love that we actually won 10 games. But if you look at the outcome of most of those games, we did not win in dominant fashion. Right. So going into that ACC championship game, a lot of people was not going to be let down because they had a feeling that, you know, the outcome would happen, just not as bad as it did. Right. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you, I mean, you know, I mean it's, it's nice to win. Uh, it's nice to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, make plays, you know, like those couple I mentioned. But you don't really want to be in that predicament. You want to be, you know, you want it handily. I mean, uh, you know, when, when – uh, Dennis Erickson was there. Jimmy Johnson was there. You know, it was uh, it, it was just it's, it's a word that's not often used. It was nasty. I mean, their offenses would just blow you out. You know, in the fourth quarter, they're still throwing and scoring, and you know, people are complaining about it. And Jimmy, you see him on the thirty for thirty. You don't want to score eighty points. Stop with that. You know, <laughs> that's the attitude they had. Yeah, that's and the attitude defense, they need again. Because that's just it. I mean, that's. I mean, if if you, I mean, not, not only Jimmy Johnson, but if you remember uh, when Steve Spurrier was at Florida, they would do that. People complain about Florida running on squad, but slop us. I mean, that's that's pretty much it. You know, you, it, you, know, you don't want to. You want to go in there and, and, and set the tone. You want to, you know, beat your plan. You want to do it handily. I mean, there might be sometimes when you know it's a close game, but you know, you don't want. You know, you don't want somebody that you're supposed to be stay close because weird things can happen, and you've seen it. You know, yeah. you know, fumble Ruskies, the the hail marys, the uh, uh, if, you, if you've seen footage of uh, uh, Cal uh, University of California and Stanford when the band got on the field, that's the last play of the game. <laughs> you know, you want to you don't want to do that. You know, you don't want to keep them close. You if, if it's somebody you're supposed to just annihilate, then do it. You know, you don't want to. You don't want to keep them close because, you know, strange things can happen. And, uh, yep. you know, I, I'm like that. I, I want to see, you know, 45 points to 50 points a game and a shutout on defense. I mean, that to me would be great. Yeah, that's exactly what you need, especially during, like, the BCS times. And nowadays when it comes down to putting teams in the playoffs, they're going to look back and say, well, you beat this team, but you barely beat them. You beat them by three points, seven points here. When you know you was expected to beat them by three or four touchdowns, right? Yeah, that that see that's that's a, uh, I, I have a hard time with when you have you know what sixteen people sitting around talking about you know who did what the percentage and all that. You know what what happens if there's injuries? You know what happens if your quarterback goes down or any you know person on the team goes down? That's uh, if well, like uh, Trey Young last year when he got suspended uh, for a few games. I mean. Like I said, you got to play it on the field, and, and it, it, the only fair way to do it is you know, everybody in conference, including Notre Dame, and you, you get everybody in a conference, and you, you can have two different conferences, but whoever wins that, they get put into the thing. And you know, I think it'd be great if they did it like basketball. You know, just have you know the people that won, and then you know maybe a few people that you know weren't in the top twenty-five was right down and see who's standing at the end. You know, that'd be I think a lot more fun than uh, what we got here. I mean, it's better than BCS where you know they put something in a computer and this person, you know, this team's supposed to be you know just running all over you. And they don't, and you know it's hard to say. I mean, you, you take I mean again I 
I'm not too familiar with the thing. I still call it Division One, Division Two, Division Two schools. I mean, there's like what North Dakota State's won like 11 national championships in their division. That's not a slouch team. I mean, they're pretty good, you know. <laughs> so that's not one of the ones you put on your schedule. Like, I hope we win. I mean, that's one you're gonna have a little trouble with because you know they're they're good at their own what they do. And again, it's you know everybody puts their pads and, and, and pants on the same way. It's just a matter who executes better. Yeah, um, I got a fan in here. He says, um, "Did you, did you ever play against um, Notre Dame?" Me, myself, or the or the team? Um, well, either both. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I did uh, a couple of times. I mean, I remember uh, when Jerry Faust was there. And, uh, yeah, we we yeah, when ended it, it was basically we were beating them anyway. So yeah, I played against them there, and then also in. Uh, uh, up there, and I'll tell you what. I mean, talk about a presence. Uh, first time I went up there, uh, we were on Notre Dame's field, and it was dead silence. Everybody's looking around. And like, you feel that? You're just like, I mean, there's a presence there, <laughs> and you know that's history. That's you know the guys from New Brockney and all the people that played there uh, way back when, and that's there. And the stadium is is really nice uh, to do that. And uh, yeah, we played there. We also uh, you know were. Uh, yeah, in that infamous fight in the uh, in the tunnel with the bands, yeah, that was that happened. They were trying to squeeze us out, and uh, a couple people on the team didn't quite like it, so they pushed back, and uh, then things started happening. Oh man, uh, I think that's probably one of the one of the fuel to the fire for the whole um, criminals versus convicts. I uh, see. I kind of let that go. I mean, I'm, I'm not like. Uh, I'm not like one like I hate Florida or I hate Florida State or anything like that. I mean, we play. It's nice to you know talk trash with people, but after it's over, if it's over, uh, I watch that thirty for thirty convicts versus uh, Catholics, and I'm like, I don't like them. I don't. I, I was so happy to be a convict uh, on that because that's you know all these guys are talking smack, and, and I have no idea what was going on in the game because we were doing pretty well. We had a chance to win at the end, and, and Steve Walsh, uh, you know, just, it, you know, it, it didn't happen. I mean, he threw a good pass, but just just a little bit too far. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, uh, in that game, that's the only game we lost, and Notre Dame went on to win a national championship that year. But just, uh, it's just you know, they're, they're talking, and, and it's just, you know, it, talking bad about us and and i really let that go because i saw the t-shirts when it was happening and i'm like you know what that's that's okay and then when they showed it on the tv it's like you know what i don't like them i, I just when we play i must just beat them handily you know and, and that's that's another thing uh when we played them down here they couldn't breathe in the orange bowl it was like two o'clock in the afternoon uh when, when, when we play it was really hot you know september uh maybe late september and, and they could Breathe. And Jerry Faust was a high school football coach, if you remember him, and he left and went somewhere else. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was just, you know, it's just, it's just tough. I mean, Florida's like that too. I mean, they used to be, we beat them my freshman year, and they're like causing, you know, wrecks and stuff in the streets of Miami, just jumping up and up. They lost, but they're still obnoxious. <laughs> yeah, that's that's Florida for you. Um, well, what what your thoughts would be to try to um you know renew that that rivalry, making it a every year thing instead of a every now and then? Well, it should be that way. I mean, we I mean honestly, we should have like we used to have this thing called the state championship. It was uh, Miami, Florida, Florida State. Uh, you know, whichever uh, team that beat the other two that was considered the uh, the state champion. We got you know I guess a trophy to pass on. I mean, I mean, it's good for it's good for the state. It's good for the fans uh, because there now there's a whole lot more of them. I mean, it's uh, uh, you know time's gone on and it's it's grown immensely with with all the people that are there. But uh, they can have stuff like that, things to to make it uh, you know worried to go. It's kind of like Oklahoma and Nebraska. I mean, you're not never going to get old. But yeah, I, I just wish they never would have discontinued that because that was a good rivalry, regardless if you won or lost. It was, you know, hard hitting football, and and uh, you know, it's something for the fans to to watch and appreciate. Just you know what's going on uh, on the field, and you know, we every year uh, when I was down there it was uh, we played Florida usually first, 
And then, you know, down the road in October, we played Florida State. And then, you know, a couple people in between. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it would be good for the state. And, again, like I mentioned when we first started, there's so many are different teams that are uh, you know, in the state now. I mean, UCF is, is uh, you know, an incredible story. Uh, you got FIU, FAU. Uh, there's others. You got, you know, the third group at FAMU. Uh, others and there's you know other teams that you know are out there that uh, you know are coming along and uh, you know it's it, it, like I said it's getting difficult or more difficult to re- recruit because you have all that competition and it, again if you remember uh, South Florida one year when they had a lot of pl- players over there well they told them that they could start and that's why they went away from every other team and then that's why they uh, did so well. Uh, the, the couple of years that they uh, you know, had it out there, so uh, you know, like I said, it's uh, I, I would like to see it because there's a lot of you know, I mean, there's so many people from Florida all over the place. Uh, you know, Florida State, same thing. And it's just it's good rivalry because you know we're uh, you know there are people in the area that uh, really get behind their schools, and it's uh, you know, it generates a lot of uh, you know uh, rivalries and and trash talking and uh, you know watching the games and getting into it and then uh, after it's all said and done game's over just move on to the next one now they're not if, if Miami's not playing Florida Florida State I'm rooting for those other two teams I mean that's just you know where I am because the state of Florida yeah. might as well you know beat everybody else but you know I've you know when I first got down to, to Miami there was people that you know would come through there and, and, and give us little uh, talks on things and it's like you know what that happened back in the 60s man you might want to get over that a little bit <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, we didn't play back then. We didn't know anybody there. there those people aren't there anymore. So yeah, there's no reason. I, I understand the right reason why you want to beat the certain teams, but you know, it, you know, if you played at Florida State and I'm at Miami, I don't hate you. We're just playing football. Yeah, I got a um, I got a Florida State fan that I um do a show with every week. Um, uh-huh. I, t- I tell them the same thing. Basically, I don't hate Florida State. I just I hate Florida State one week out of every year. <laughs> That's uh-huh. it. But other than that, I'm rooting for you guys to win because when we beat y'all, it's more satisfying. Uh-huh. Which and um, it is because then you look at it uh, from a state standpoint, like uh, Florida's better than Ohio or Michigan or something. That's what you want to see. You want to see that South Florida's dominant. When I mean, the, the recruiting, if you, if you uh, follow it along, there's like five states that uh, you know these uh, schools go after: Florida, Texas, California. Uh, I believe Ohio and, and Pennsylvania, uh, those are the five big hot ones that uh, people go after. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, I mean, we play pretty much football year round down here because it doesn't snow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it so, barely uh, gets past, what, 70 degrees? <laughs> uh-huh. Well, nowadays, I mean, I really, I mean, I, I appreciate it. And I don't like it when uh, we played down there uh, with the range. We either didn't practice or we went to this place called the Armory or we went to a gym. Which kind of all you, all you could do is like throw green passes and the handoff because you couldn't throw deep. One of the guy's going to run into the side until you hit the roof. So uh, you know they, they got the new facility uh, down there. A lot of the players, uh, you know, we all contributed what we could contribute to build that uh, indoor facility for. Them. But uh, I think that that uh, part of the game, you know, the elements are it's going away. I mean, get the rain and the Snow will play uh, an issue in it, but uh, you know, other than that, you know, you play indoors. You can't really uh, get into shape uh, with the humidity if you're indoors. I mean, like I said, that's one of the things that we had going for us. You had people coming down from Pennsylvania. We played Pitt one year. We had those guys are on the sideline just looking for the oxygen. I mean, that's how how intense it was. But now you don't have that. It's you, know, you practice indoors. You go out there, and, and we're in the same elements too. And we we yeah. have the uh, you know they're not conditioned enough in the, in the humidity to play. And that's, I thought that was one of the big factors uh, that we had. Not only you know at Miami, but when you know, I was playing high school, we we have that too. So uh, you know it's it's totally different. It's a totally different game, and uh, you know it's uh, pretty much everybody's on a level ground now. They got everybody's got the state of the uh, weight rooms and facilities and stuff like that. So it's uh, yeah, it's, it's whoever can recruit the best is going to be the best, and that's uh, where it boils down to. All right. Um, 
Okay, we've got a question here from John. John said, what's your most satisfying win and what's your most disappointing loss? When I was there or over time? Uh, when you was there. Uh, I would say Nebraska, undoubtedly, was the best win because uh, we were walking on the field with the best college football team ever. And, uh, you know, we, we ended up, you know, coming out on time. Like I said, it's, it's, it was like everybody believed that we were going to win. And you know, that's what happened. And then uh, probably the most disappointing is uh, when I was a starter there, uh, we didn't go to a bowl game. Yeah, we were seven and four. And, uh, we were uh, invited to a couple of bowl games, so I passed on it uh, one reason or another. So uh, that was disappointing to, to, to see that. Yeah, speaking of bowl games, um, so for the past – you know, a couple few years or whatever. Miami's been invited, but they haven't been showing up. What are your, what are your thoughts on what they need to do going towards bowl games? Because, I mean, half the season when we have those disappointing season and they go into the bowl game, it's like the team doesn't show up. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a, it's a, um, it's an attitude. It, it, you know, it, it's everybody's got to you know, check themselves. they got to, you know, uh, look in the mirror and see who's going to show up. They got to prepare for it. They got to, uh, uh, you know, do. I mean, if you've ever been around a bowl week or, or, or when you're invited, you go to a bowl game and it's uh, it, it's just a whirlwind of a lot of stuff happening. You not only do you have to practice, get prepared, but you got you know media all over the place. You got interviews all over the place. You got functions with the other team uh, to go with during the week. And, and uh, you got to be focused. You know, if you go out there uh, like they did when they went to uh, the Sugar Bowl and played uh, Alabama, I remember when George T. I can't remember. I, wanna say, I don't know who it was that he ran from behind and took the ball ran back the other way. But we lost that game. Uh, it, it, you got to be prepared. You got to you got to have fun to a point, and then you got to focus in on what you're doing. And it's a it's a discipline thing. I mean, if you don't, you know, hang, you don't have uh, that check. I was kind of uh, elementary, but you got to make sure the players are there, uh, that they show up, that you have the practices to uh, do that, and you gotta you gotta focus on it. If you get caught up in the media, you get caught up in hey, you're the greatest. Uh, you know, team and all this stuff, your head's going to get filled up with a bunch of stuff that doesn't need to be there. You need to be on the field you know, focusing on what you're supposed to do. And it's, it's I mean, you know, I was at, uh, I believe the Orange Bowl when we played uh, Wisconsin the first time. Wisconsin showed up. We did. I mean, it was embarrassing. We're, we're sitting there. And the main thing is, 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 is uh, their fans are so nice. I mean, you know, we're sitting with a bunch of them and like, you know, you know, sorry this happened. I'm like, well, you guys play better than we did. And, you know, we didn't show up. You know, you, you got to show up. You got to, you know, the first uh, hit off the ball, you got to make sure they know who you are and that you, you execute what you practice. And it's got to be an intensity. I mean, you can, the way it just works with that is, is when we played, well, you see, it was, you see, it was, uh, sorry, uh, going to the Orange Bowl, uh, first bowl game we went to. It was, you know, letting us do a couple things for a few days and after that it cut everything off and we're just focused on the t- you know practicing and getting ready and, and just cutting everything else so you got to do that if you let it go all the way through the whole week it's it's kind of like a non-stop uh, uh, you know a spring break party you know everybody's in everybody's room and they're doing their thing but you got to get uh got to get focused you got to you know, see what you're there for yeah it's a bowl game but it means stuff I mean, it, it goes to uh, not only getting money for the school, but people watching you. Do you want to go to that school? Uh, you know, and that's what all the bowl games are about. Not only money, but, uh, you know, showcasing your team. Or And you know, if you get beat, do you really want to go to a team to go get beat? <laughs> no, you don't. You want to go to someone that's going to, you know, you do to, uh, to win. And, you know, it, it's, it, it's disheartening when you see that and you, you got the intensity. I mean, you ever have the ability, uh, you know, like I have to watch football games with guys offensively and defensively that I played with that you listen to what goes on. There's a lot of different things that go on. I mean, I'm watching it with Dallas Cameron, a friend of mine, who uh, to this day is the first person and the last person to go 100 miles an hour in practice every day. Uh, because 
their their feet are flat foot. And every time I guess they're not in a runner stance. And if you guys, it looks like they're gear enough where they're. I never knew that. <laughs> so he's <laughs> pointing that stuff out. So you got to be you know intense. You got to look at what it is. And yes, you're invited to go to this. If you want to call it a party, which you know, it could be. But you got to get focused on what you're there for, who you're playing, and just block everything else out. you got to come out there and just, you know, run the table and score as much as you can. So, uh, you know, that's what it is. It's intensity, and it's actually being prepared. And, uh, you know, you see that even in the NFL. You know, one team in the, pro, in the uh, Super Bowl shows up, the other one doesn't. Uh, and that's, again, that's getting all caught up in, you know, you, you pat, everybody's patting you on the back and you're getting a big head and you go on the field and it's all flat. That's what can happen. Yeah, just like um this past season with um former former Miami Hurricane Jaron Williams. Uh, it, a lot of reports that saying that, you know, he was out partying, breaking curfew, you know, showing up to practice and drunk and stuff like that. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, that he needs to be reeled in, uh, and, and I did not. I watched. I mean, I can, I, I can, uh, I, I can tell you, a, a quarterback's got a good arm. It's just one or two throws. I remember uh, Craig Erickson throwing him from Benny Testaverde, and I remember the throw he took. It was from the ten yards into the, for a touchdown. I mean, it was there in a hurry. So I, I, he's got a strong arm. Uh, but you got to have that. You got to have, um, you know, the, the discipline. Uh, you got to have the leadership. Uh, when you're not the starter, uh, you can go do whatever you want because you're flying underneath the radar. But once you uh, get into that role, it doesn't matter the position. You got to carry yourself, uh, you know, with a, you know, with respect. Uh, you got to show the other people that are looking at you that are behind you that you deserve to be there because you're doing the right things. And you know, none of that is excusable. I mean, uh, if you've been to the University of Miami, there's really not much to do on campus, but you can get lost in Miami on South Beach and uh, you know it, it, it takes a unique individual in order to balance the two if you remember two life crew that was down there when uh, you know uh, the team was doing really well they were getting into places that I mean it's on the uh, 30 for 30 you, you can see it uh, they were basically like rock stars down there but they knew how to put it in gear when they were playing. It takes unique individuals, strong individuals, in order to do that. Uh, not saying they should be doing that, but um, you know, you, you need to keep the discipline. Again, you're put, you're you're uh, uh, letting down the guy playing next to you if you go do that. And if you uh, you you're not in shape to play, you know, you know that makes sense. You know, just thinking back about some of the passes that he's thrown. Uh, some of the decisions that he's made. I mean, you, you really can't play, you know, in my opinion, any sport when you're impaired like that because, you know, you might just do something you're supposed to and you, know, you come up short. But you're letting down your teammate. You're letting down the, the school. You're letting down, uh, you know, the, uh, the fans. You're letting down your family. I mean, honestly, you want to go out there and represent, uh, you know, your family and school. Uh, you know, like that, undisciplined, uh, not practicing hard, not doing what you're supposed to do, uh, you know, working out, going to school. Um, you got to do all that as a leader. And, and, you know, you may not want to be in that role, but you are. You have kids watching you, you know. Uh, it's amazing when you see guys, doesn't matter the school, walk around. You got little kids looking up at you like, wow, look at that. I want to be just like that. You know, you got to carry yourself a certain way. If you do, you know, you do party and all that, you know, keep it, you know, out of the limelight. You know, don't, don't get you know, caught up in all that stuff. But, uh, you know, after the game, yeah, you know, you know, let it go. But, the, you know, before you play the game, you got to, you know, be uh, where you want to be. On like Saturday nights were crazy uh, when we were down there. But uh, you got to get refocused on Sunday, watch the, uh, the game films, and then you practice all the week. And then, uh, yeah, you play real hard that Saturday so you can do it up again. So, uh, you don't want that stigma, and, and, and the thing is, uh, too, you got to have uh, uh, discipline. I mean, with you know different coaches will pull for special stuff like when you're called into their office, it's like going to the principal's office. Like, oh, what I do? Uh, <laughs> there's some coaches that I've heard through, uh, you know, former players that are more in touch with the school that you know it was lackadaisical uh, that players were hanging out in the coach's office. Uh, you don't want it to do that way because it's basically, you know, your discipline 
is not going to take because you, you know, invite them into an environment that's supposed to be a little bit more business-like and it's just uh, like a hangout. And uh, it, it's a discipline thing. And, you know, like I said, you got to, uh, the coaches have to instill that and the player has to, you know, respond to it. They have to, you know, take ownership of what they do. And, and you know, that's the type of players that you want is, uh, you know, leaders, uh, people that to do the right things. And, uh, you know, they don't get caught up in everything. All right. So um, I got one more question for you. It's We're going on to like an hour and 30 minutes now. So. Let's try to wrap it up with this last question. Um, with the off season, with well, with the regular season being as terrible as it was, six and seven, you know, losing the FIU Duke, you know, uh, losing Georgia Tech team, and then getting shut out in the bowl game against um LA Tech. But Manny seems to have that magic. I don't know what it is that he he has, but. He always reach into the off season and pull out these amazing players. What are your thoughts on his recruits? Recruiting, uh, he, yeah, he's uh, well. The great thing is he's from Miami, so he knows all that. His dad was the mayor down there, so he's uh, pretty well uh, connected down in that area. And, and uh, uh, he's a great. Uh, Uh, again, he's got his defensive scheme, his offensive scheme. They need to go after the players uh, that are going to fit that. I mean, you can have a guy that can run, you know, four two forty, but is he going to fit into your offense? <laughs> you know, that's what it is. But I mean, in order to get back to where it is, uh, if you uh, you know, read up on or heard about the program, I'm sure it is in other places. But uh, we go back there and we're, we're you know like big brothers. You know, we've been there. This is what we've done. You know, we got Ed Reed, which I think is phenomenal, who's a, uh, uh, a consultant, I think he is, uh, for that. And uh, he doesn't take any uh, anything from anybody, and he'll call you out. And I, I really respect that about him. And uh, I think that's what it needs. You need order. In order to get back to where they want to be, these younger guys got to listen to what the other guys that have played there and become – uh, pro pro bowlers and Hall of Famers. They need to listen to all those guys, what they did, how they did it. Uh, and it's a very simple thing. You got to have the discipline out of it. You got to respect your coach, respect your uh, your players, your teammates, uh, everybody that's around there. You got to go to school, uh, which kind of sounds funny, but yeah, you got to do that. And then uh, you just carry yourself in, in a way that's going to make uh, not only the school but the city of Miami, you know, proud to have that team out there. And that's what it's all about. It's about community. Uh, it's about, uh, you know, family. It's about loving each other on, on the, you know, in that area. And that's what really drives a great team is uh, you, you, you love the people that you play with, that you're a family. Uh, uh, you're going to go through uh, good times and bad times, but you're going to stick together. And that's what they need. They need the guys that are going to do that. Uh, it, it used to be, uh, when I was down there, uh, there was just a handful of uh, guys that went NFL, and it was over uh, decades. You know, you have one guy in this decade, one guy, well, if you've ever been down there, there's so many players that gone through there in the NFL now that, uh, you know, uh, it's way up there. And it's a very, very impressive uh, line of people that have gone through there. And you, you see it, the facility is phenomenal. Uh, it's, just, it's a lot bigger, a lot better than when I was there. And uh, you just got to, you know, embrace it, uh, be a hurricane, be a convict, do what you're supposed to do. And, uh, and quite frankly, I mean, we have a, uh, a target on us every time we play. So if you get like, uh, you know, like a Wisconsin, you know, all they hear about is, uh, you know, Miami is uh, you know, this type of team. Well, they want to beat you every single weekend in somebody's bowl game. And that's what they want to do is beat, you know, the, the bad Miami team. But we're not where we were. We, we can get back there, you know. We can get back to where we were. But we got to have the, uh, the nucleus, the recruiting, the, you know, sticking behind the coach uh, and, and, you know, give them a fair shot. And like I said, it's, it's, it's nowadays it's 35 years and then you're done. you got to let them run and get the right players. And, you know, we, we've gone through an offensive coordinator. We know you want to get so uh, you got to have the consistency of, uh, you know, that. I mean, 
you know, picture yourself in, in any job, if you continue having your boss replaced every couple of years, you're not going to know what you're supposed to be doing. So you got to give them the change. you got to give, give the right people in there. you got to get the discipline. Uh, and it's, you know, it's just a whole thing. You gotta, you, you're coming from high school and you're going to college and you're going up in four to five years. And that's what it is. And you got to carry yourself accordingly. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just a matter of uh, getting the right people, the right things at the right time, and uh, they'll be back to where they want to be. Yeah, that's, that's the hope, man. That's the dream for Miami. Well, um, uh-huh. thank you for coming on, Kyle. I really appreciate it. You know, the fans, they appreciate it. All right, anytime. Yeah, I'm, uh, you got the number, so call anytime. Okay. Um, yeah, we're going to have to set up one with, um, with name it. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. You're, you're, it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, he's, he's you know, done a lot more than I have. Uh, uh, very impressive. And I, I, I saw his uh, 30 for 30 in, uh, in uh, Coach Snellenberger left Alabama, and Coach Brian told him, uh, don't come back unless you have him. And then uh, Schellenberg talked to Joe Namath's mother, and Joe Namath's mother says, oh, you're going with Coach Schellenberg in Alabama. <laughs> That's how it went. <laughs> so this is a great guy. I mean, it, it, you'll have a lot of fun with them. And, you know, he's done a whole lot. Uh, you know, like I said, he's down to a great guy. Uh, you know, just really, really phenomenal. Thank you, Mr. So, yeah, if you can get hooked up with them, uh, tell him I said hi. All righty. So I'll try to get Joe Namath on and – um. I'll keep in contact with you, Kyle. Thank you for coming right. on. I really appreciate it. All right, thanks, Kyle. I appreciate you. All right, you have a great night, man. You too, thanks. All right, guys, there you have it. One of the, one of Miami's greats, a part of the first national championship team. Like I said, this right here is a replica. He has the real deal. He was a part of the Miami Hurricanes' first national championship. The building block, the stepping stone. You know, you got to start somewhere. And to be a part of that first, you know, a lot of people can't say that they was a part of the first. But it's amazing, man. Um, I ran ran into him through a a friend of mine, a co-worker of mine, who um, knew who he was because I initially didn't see him. But the person, my friend, my coworker, saw him and said, "Hey, that's um, that's Kyle. He played for the Miami Hurricanes. He won a national championship with the Miami Hurricanes in the '83 slash '84." And I was like, "Oh man, I need to, you know, try to have a conversation with him. You know, feel him out, see what he's what he's like or whatever, and see if he would like to come on to the show. Great guy, great conversation, and you know." I'm going to continue to talk to him behind the scene. And like he said, um, I'm going to try to get Joe Namath on the show sometime in the future. But until then, you know, I hope you guys have a great night, man. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. You know, hit that like button for me. Everything. Um, if you know anybody that would have liked to be here that didn't get to see the show or anything, you know, you could share it to them, pass it on. But, you know, thank you guys for coming. I hope all y'all have a great night. And I'm out.